Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another important lecture. Today we are studying the pathophysiology of dry and wet ARMD that is age related macular degeneration. So the age related macular degeneration or the AMD is of two types the dry non exudative atrophic ARMD or the wet exudative or neovascular AMD. The ARMD or AMD is a leading cause of blindness in the age group above 65 years of age. If you consider America alone, there are about 11 million cases of dry AMD and 1.5 million cases of wet AMD and about 71,000 cases are added every year. To understand AMD, it is very important to understand the anatomy of retina. Now, I already have a video on anatomy of retina and I would advise you to be thorough about the anatomy, specifically the retinal pigment epithelium of the retina to understand the age-related macular degeneration. The RPE, which is shown over here as these red cells, are actually sitting on the basement membrane and they are actually sitting... Uh, the RP is actually the outermost layer of the retina and from there we have the choroid which is the vascular layer. Now the innermost layer of the choroid is actually the Brux membrane. So Brux membrane can also be thought as a junction between the choroid and the retinal pigment epithelium. However, this Brux membrane is a pentalamina structure. If you see it is composed of five layers and that's why I called it as a pentalamina structure. So the innermost layer which is in contact with the retinal pigment epithelium is the retinal pigment epithelium basement membrane. Okay, so the innermost layer is this one. The retinal pigment epithelium basement membrane. Now, just outside of that, we have a collagenous zone. Okay, so this is called the inner collagenous zone. Then, after the collagenous zone, we have the central elastic fiber zone. So, we have the inner collagenous zone and then we have the elastic zone. Then, again, we have one more collagenous zone and that is called the outer collagenous zone. And then, finally, we have a basement membrane on the choroidal side which is actually formed by the choreo capillaries. So it, is, it should be quite clear that the Brux membrane actually is a pentalaminar structure. So it's very important to understand these layers of Brux membrane. So we have the basement membrane of the RPE, the inner collagenous zone, the central band of elastic fibers, the outer collagenous zone and the basement membrane again of the choreo capillaries. The RP is a very important structure that is the retinal pigment epithelium cells as you can see these are actually having this villus like projections in which they are in close contact with the photoreceptors that is the rods and the cones right now the RPE as you can see is a metabolically active cell and it sits on the uh, Brux membrane like this a very important function of the retinal pigment epithelium is to take the waste products from the degenerated photoreceptors or from the photoreceptors and photoreceptors spe uh, speci uh, specifically they are going to uh, degenerate and their discs as I uh, told you in the, my video on anatomy of retina, the photoreceptors are actually composed of certain discs and these discs are shed periodically and it is the RPE which will collect these things and transport them towards the choroid. Okay, so it is basically responsible for carrying the metabolic waste product from the photoreceptors across the Brux membrane to the choroid. So there are certain changes which will occur in this retinal pigment epithelium with age, right? So what are these changes? Number one, as I told you, the photoreceptors which are in close contact with the RPE, they get reduced in density and their distribution with age. Number two, the pigment epithelium uh, will also undergo certain changes like the melanin granules will actually undergo uh, uh, decrease in their number so there will be loss of melanin granules lipofusion granules will form and more and more amount of residual bodies will be formed so basically the rpe was involved actually in the transport of the metabolic waste products from the uh, photoreceptors to the choroid but with age this function will go down and the rp cells will get accumulated with a lot of waste and residual bodies 
Then there are certain things which is called as the basal laminar and linear deposits. So I will tell you in a while what is meant by this basal laminar deposits and basal linear deposits. And of course the choreo capillaries which were present outside the Brux membrane, they will also undergo certain progressive involutional changes with age. So as I told you, these are the photoreceptors, okay? So photoreceptors are going to undergo atrophy and then the pigment granules will be lost and there'll be lots of uh, residual bodies which are going to accumulate in the retinal pigment epithelium cells. And then there are two special things that you need to know. One is the basal laminar deposit and the other one is the basal linear deposit. And the reason I want you to know about the basal laminar deposit and basal linear deposit is that if you understand these two terms, you are going to understand how a drusen is formed. Okay. And then, of course, we have the choreo capillaries, and these choreo capillaries are going to undergo a certain amount of degeneration. So, what is meant by this basal laminar deposit? Now, I want you to have a look at this picture. So this is the retinal pigment epithelium cell and every cell will have a plasma membrane, right? And it is sitting on the basement membrane, right? So what is happening is that in normally the, the plasma membrane should be in close contact with the placement membrane. However, over here, there are certain deposits as you can see and these deposits are nothing but these are granular lipid rich material along with certain collagen fibers deposited between the plasma membrane membrane of the retinal pigment epithelium and the basal membrane of the retinal pigment epithelium and these deposits are called the basal lamina deposits. Second are the basal linear deposit. So what is meant by the basal linear deposit? Now I already told you that the Brux membrane is actually a pentalaminous structure and in the Brux membrane what did I tell you there was an inner collagenous zone. Now in that inner collagenous zone of the Brux membrane sometimes there will be again lipid deposition and electron dense granules as you can see over here okay. These are the deposits and they are called the basal linear deposits which are getting deposited among the inner collagenous zone of the Brux membrane. So I hope at this point it is very clear to you what is meant by the basal laminar deposit and basal linear deposits. Now these deposits are very important in the pathogenesis of AMD because with age it is the changes which are occurring at the level of the retinal pigment epithelium and the inner zone of the Brux membrane which is finally leading to the drusen formation and finally leading to the formation of AMD. So what is happening basically is normally the Brux membrane is quite a compact pentalaminar structure but because of the deposition of these basal linear deposit it is converted into a puff pastry like appearance. So if you uh, would remember this puff pastry it, it actually has lots of layers and spaces between and such uh, puff pastry appearance will be taken up by the Brux membrane because of the accumulation of the deposits in between. So what is meant by drusens? Drusens are a very important thing when it comes to age-related macular degeneration because they are something which we can see clinically. The uh, basal linear deposits and the basal uh, this uh, basal linear deposits and the basal laminar deposits are something which we see only elect uh, using electron microscope. However, what we see clinically is a small yellow round lesions which are located along the basal surface of the RP as can be seen in this picture and these are called drusens, right? So histologically, the material in the drusens corresponds to the basal laminar deposits and the basal linear deposits and they uh, actually represent a thickening of the inner aspect of the Brux membrane. Now, if you would remember by inner aspect, what do I mean? I mean the inner collagenous zone of the Brux membrane. Now, drusens can actually be classified based upon their size into small drusens, which are usually less than 63 micrometers in diameter, intermediate drusens, which are 63 to 124 micrometers in diameter, and large drusens, which are more than 125 micrometers in diameter. And then there is also something called the drusenoid pigment epithelium detachment, also called the PED. So these are nothing but the large drusens which are going to coalesce together and form a, uh, they are going to actually cause a separation of the pigment epithelium, detach, uh, pigment epithelium that is the retinal pigment epithelium 
uh, from the rest of the Bruff's membrane and the size of this PD will usually be more than 350 micrometers in diameter. So if you would remember again the puff pastry analogy you will uh, actually be able to understand that what happens is because of that thickening along the inner aspect of the Bruff's membrane and along the RPE the layer is the inner part of the Bruff's membrane and the RPE is actually going to separate from the rest of the Bruff's membrane leading to a pigment epithelial detachment so when such a pigment epithelium detachment is small you can call it still a large or a soft drusen however when it becomes larger to a size of 350 then it is referred to as a drusenoid ped okay so the same thing i'm trying to explain here the basal linear deposits and the basal laminar deposits over here they are going to convert the Bruff's membrane RP complex into a puff pastry appearance because of which you have spaces and these are going to separate this area from the underlying Bruff's membrane layers and therefore we will have a pigment epithelial detachment. Now, drusens can actually be classified also based upon their boundaries. So they can be hard drusens, soft drusens or confluent drusens. Hard drusens usually have a well demarcated and discrete boundaries. Soft drusens will have a poorly demarcated boundaries and confluent drusens is that the soft drusens when they coalesce together without any clear boundaries it's called a confluent drusens. Now the idea to know about hard soft confluent is that an eye which has a soft or a confluent drusen is more likely to progress towards atrophy and develop a choroidal neovascular membrane okay so uh, compared to an eye which has only a hard drusen so soft and confluent drusens are at a greater risk of converting to wet armd if you want to know more about drusens i have a video on my channel uh, about drusens which is labeled as all you need to know about drusens uh, and hyperpigmented lesions in the retina now, coming to the other type of drusens, which are called the reticular pseudodrusens. The reasons they are called uh, reticular is because they form a network and reticular-like network. And they're called pseudodrusens because of their location. Like the normal drusens, they're not located in the basal region. They're located in the apical surface of the retinal pigment epithelium. And also their location will be more towards the superior macular area now they are quite different from the drusens because they do not contain the shed disc remnants okay so i told you the metabolic waste which is being carried by the rp cells towards the choroid from the photoreceptor actually consists of those disc remnants so these pseudodrusens actually do not carry those disc remnants and moreover the lipids which are present in this pseudodrusens are also very different However, uh, what is more important for you to remember is that the presence of reticular pseudodrusens is associated with progressive atrophy of the photoreceptor layer and a greater risk of conversion to wet ARMD or CNVM. So again, this picture is actually showing you this lumpy bumpy RPE and this is actually the pseudodrusens and the pseudodrusens are actually more uh, visible in the fundus autofluorescence uh, and the infrared imaging. So there can be some abnormalities in the RPE itself which is seen in uh, ARMD and these can be seen clinically as well. So these can be focal hyperpigmentation pigmentation where you have increased pigmentation at the level of outer retina which is more appreciable. This outer retina is more appreciable on OCT and sometimes you can have depigmentation which is called focal atrophy. So it looks like pigmented uh, mottling okay pigment modeling or frank depigmentation and when this focal atrophy actually extends for a greater diameter of about 175 micrometers then that is referred to as the geographical atrophy which is a hallmark of dry armd so this picture over here shows you certain depigmented areas and you can see here the pigmentation as well so this picture is showing you the hyperpigmentation and also focal atrophy this focal atrophy when it extends to a larger area you can see the rp uh, pigmentation is lost in this in this area and you can see certain choroidal vessels over uh, underneath this and this is referred to as the geographical atrophy now after this we will study about the pathophysiology of wet amd or neovascular amd 
So the neovascular AMD or the wet ARMD, it is called wet because it's associated with exudation. And where is that exudation coming from? It is coming from the new vessels. And where are these new vessels coming from? They're coming from the choroid. So the hallmark of the wet ARMD is choroidal neovascular membrane. Okay, so it's a defining characteristic of neovascular AMD. So basically, let me just try to explain you about the pathophysiology of wet ARMD. What happens is that it, it, is the same, it is the same diagram what we saw. So this is the photoreceptors and then we have the RP cells which are sitting on the basement membrane and Brux membrane and below that we have the vascular layer of the retina which is the choroid. So what is happening is that we have here the drusens okay which are getting accumulated. So all that drusens and dry ARMD changes are actually going to alter the environment of this area leading to excessive production of pro-angiogenic factors that means factors which will promote angiogenesis that is development of the blood vessels so what happens now the blood vessels are going to start to grow growing from this um, choroidal membrane from the choroidal area they're going to pierce this Brux membrane and from there they're going to enter the retinal pigment epithelium and from the retinal pigment epithelium they're going to also sometimes enter the photoreceptor area. So the architecture of the retina is going to be altered because of the invasion of the abnormal vessels which are coming from the choroid. Now these abnormal vessels will also bring fibrous tissue along with that and then they are going to lead to formation of a fibrous scar as well. So let us see what happens. So the pathogenesis of wet ARMD what happens is first there will be degenerative changes in the Brux membrane okay because of the accumulation of the drusens and thickening of the membrane okay and then this will provide a pro-angiogenic environment which will stimulate neovascularization from the choriocapillaries which will perforate the Brux membrane and as they perforate the Brux membrane they also bring along with them the fibroblasts these vessels which are new they are fragile they can leak they can bleed they can cause exudation because of that the normal architecture of the RP and the photoreceptor is lost and finally when they degenerate the fibrous tissue and the vascular tissue will ultimately form a complex and will form a hypertrophic fibrotic scar which is called disiform scar. So don't uh, get confused. Disiform scar is a feature of wet AMD. However, the geographical atrophy is a feature of dry AMD. So over here is a picture which is showing you the signs of choroidal neovascularization. Now don't worry at this point, in my next video I will be talking about the choroidal neovascularization. Here in the first picture what you can see is you can see this grayish white area. So a CNVM usually looks uh, grayish greenish on the fundus picture. And this is a choroidal neovascularization which is showing exudation. So you can see this a kind of a incomplete macular star formation because of that exudate. And in this picture, second picture, you have excessive lipid deposits uh, because of the choroidal neovascularization and you have certain amount of bleeding as well. In the third picture, you can see extensive amount of intra and subretinal hemorrhage. So why is that hemorrhage occurring in CNVM? Because these are nothing but they are vessels which are coming from the choroid. And ultimately, when everything gets resolved after the choroidal neovascular membrane gets resolved finally you are left with this fibrous tissue in this area and this is called disiform scarring because it is present in the form of a disc so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day